Welcome back to 3.7 edition of Three Guys, One Atlas. See, there you go. <laughs> nice. I love it. That's pretty love good. It. It's pretty good. Um, the still uniquely unnamed PoE podcast uh, where we seem to talk about whatever seems to strike. Um, last time we spoke was just before 3.16 launched. So it's been it's been a while as we since we've spoken in a group. Um, but I guess let's start it off. I mean, this wasn't kind of on the list of topics, but I think it's a good way to jump in is how did you guys like Scourge? Uh, you know, did it meet expectations? Things like that. Uh, Lalkohol or Sniz, I don't know who wants to kick it off. Sniz, you go ahead. Okay. I, Scourging uniques, I didn't really like. That's something I, I on, or, or any item. I, I default to uniques, but any item for that matter. I, I can be honest and I, I will say I didn't engage with it at all, pretty much. But uh, the extra juice from pressing the button, getting all the extra monsters, I love that. And it was so smooth. Performance was so good. So yeah. to wrap up, I wish that we would get the juice, but the, the scourging of items itself, I don't mind losing that. I do mind losing the currencies, though. I like the currencies. Your yeah. views on scourge, local? Pretty much the same. By the end of it, it just felt like delirium. It's just like more juice. The, the mechanic itself was... Uh, it was just like such a missed opportunity. Scourge maps, I have like 50 Scourge maps that I just never ran. Because why would you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, on, on that note, I feel like the problem with the Scourge maps is you could be running, you know, you're on like your ninth iteration of the Scourge map. And then it, the 10th one is like build breaking, right? You can't yeah. run it because it hits something that you just can't do. Like you're taking, you know, 300 energy shield per second or something like that. that and Or, you know, 300 life per second and you're an ES build and you just die. <laughs> And uh, that's, yeah. that's not fun, right? So it's like, there was stuff like that that I feel like needed to be tweaked. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, like the things where it's, you know, take X fizz damage and you're kind of pushing it. And if you go higher and higher and higher, you know, you kind of know that you're going to put yourself in a precarious position. But yeah, I don't know. That that kind of ruined it for me is I would get so many times where I was deep into like scourging a map and I would get something that just I couldn't run and I'd have to yeah. sell it. And that's not, now that, that didn't feel good. Plus the there was no real clear... Like that was the goal, right? You know, in Delirium, at least there was kind of like these, um, you were running the what, simulacrums, right? So it was kind of easy to to push towards that and hit you the goal of like getting voices out of that or whatever it may be. Whereas I didn't feel like there was a clear end goal for Scourge. It was just kind of yeah. like do this forever. Um, it kind of it kind of fell off for me pretty quicker than other leagues this year, I would say, personally. Yeah. I think a lot of people felt that way. Just like, yeah. it, it feels like we haven't had a, a league for two months. Because they ended it with those events. And then it was, I don't know, just like it made the whole league feel weird. Like playing off to the events. But yeah, fortunately, I think that. Yeah, go it ahead. Just got extend I say it got extended, which made it yeah. worse, I think. Yeah, so I was going to add in. But Another thing, uh, right. If you guys remember at the start of Scourge, when you could Scourge your maps. I know we're talking 3.17, but this is just something I, I want to discuss uh, as well. It's, it's been three months, guys. Yes. It's been three months. You know? Yes. <laughs> So, so they always want um, a specific mechanic to be the best source of the rewards from that mechanic, right? So Delve should be the best source of fossils, etc. But Scourged maps, uh, for things like Breach Splinters and Legion Splinters, if you were to Scourge the map and you were to hit the right mods and use the watchstones, they were crazy for Legion yeah. emblems early. Like farming Legion with, with your usual Scarab setup felt like a waste of time. So, although it was good for loot, that was, that was weird to me. Uh, that was something that... I don't know if I like in a league mechanic where it trivializes other other mm -hmm. leagues and their rewards. But the juice yeah. was good. The juice was good. The juice was good. And fortunately, we have a lot to look forward to that isn't Scourge now, right? Hell of yes. a transition. Hell of a transition. Beautiful. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it. Let's just let's just cut the podcast right here. <laughs> um, we do have a lot to look forward to. Um, I think the first big thing that speaking very broadly right obviously there's a lot of little changes within there that we can get to in a bit here but speaking very broadly is the first big change is the new atlas right uh the atlas being i would say completely revamped is is a way to look at it uh with the regions being removed so no more no more region specific passive points it's all one large atlas passive tree there is watch on system removed it's got void stones now which are unlocked through bossing which is cool hmm. this is definitely a bossing league and then another, I guess, smaller note on that is right. Favorite the favorite map systems has been kind of 
adjusted with all these changes. So what are you guys' thoughts on this? I know I, I, we we don't want to speculate too hard without actually having the Atlas passive tree in front of us. It's, it's very easy to say, oh, you know, is, are these going to be nerfs to, uh, you know, to the Atlas regions because of the change to the passives or are these going to be buffs? You know, we don't know. It's we've seen, you know, sprinkles of nodes here and there, but nothing, nothing substantial where I can say definitively one way or the other. What are you guys' thoughts on that initial initial, I guess, views without having it in front of you? Uh, I I love that we're getting a way to set up our atlas earlier, uh, much 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 earlier. So usually to get the good and big atlas nodes, you would have to the easiest fight was Shaper or Elder Guardians, right? You only start dropping those in tier fourteen maps. Now I know you get regional nodes that you can set up in each specific region, but the fact that every single map you complete now gives you progression, gives you more points to spec in your tree. I absolutely love that. You were always pressured into starting a build that could do these big maven fights so you could get your points, you could start farming, right? That was the best way to farm. But now there's definitely an argument to be made for playing fast mappers on League Start because missing out on the massive big boss fights, you know, you still have a pretty well set up Atlas even if you don't go for those big fights. But I, I don't know. I love the tree. I really do. Local, yeah. how, how do you that, feel about the tree? That's actually a really interesting point that I haven't heard anyone make, which is we've all been saying it's a bossing league because there's new bosses and some of the stuff is tied to bossing like the void stones. But like you said, we're getting a lot of our Atlas points just from clearing maps really quickly. So if you have a really fast mapper, you aren't being punished for it, which is really cool. And I mean, other than that, I feel like it's just a much more streamlined system. It's much clearer, especially to players who probably, I don't know, newer players who are like the Watchstone system was really confusing, man. Like I, it was. for the first Agreed. couple of leagues, even, you know, I wasn't doing it optimally. I didn't know there was an optimal way to do it, but like, I don't know. I told my friend one day and he was like, you're doing it wrong. Now there's not going to be any of that. I just play maps and go up. But yeah, I, I only learned there was an optimal way to do this maybe six months ago. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I've just been doing it and I play enough that I guess it didn't really matter, but um, it, it, I'm glad, I'm glad it's gone. I, once I found out there was an optimal strategy, I felt kind of like an idiot. You know? Exactly. Um, and uh, it's, um, I'm looking forward to the system. I, I think it's objectively a simplified version of what we're already looking at. And I like the incremental progress aspect to it that we've got already kind of touched on as opposed to getting you know points in big chunks by doing bosses and you know the last one is is quite a bit of points right i mean or uh, quite a bit of uh bosses you have to do to get to right it was 10 bosses in one zone which is can be a lot especially if yeah. you don't have those maps right if you if you're kind of low on maps and you just don't have the ones that you need to get to 10 bosses which could certainly happen it becomes tricky i'm i'm a huge fan of this system i think obviously execution we'll have to wait and see uh, because cause it's difficult to tell, obviously, without having the full tree in front of us. But uh, I do think that it's good. One, one concern I did have initially, which was kind of uh, cleared as as I rewatched some of the announcement, was essentially I was concerned that with the Void Stones being gated behind such high tier bosses, that it was going to be kind of inaccessible for at least a lot of people, um, right? Like for example, like Uber Elder is not a fight that a lot of people hit in a league necessarily. Um, but now that at least now I'm glad that was like at least a reason to. Uh, as opposed to just, you know, watcher's eyes. But um, I was a little concerned that the Void Stones were gated too high, but then you kind of look at it, and you really, you really don't need four Void Stones, right? You don't need all these Void Stones to play the game. You yeah. can do it without it. So I think that, I think it, it feels like a very good level of natural progression. Again, obviously, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But I was just relieved that it wasn't kind of like the only way to get to, you know, tier 16 maps was four Void, void Stones, which is what I originally thought based on the trailer. That would be bad. Um, it, yeah. Very bad. Very bad. Um, huh. just, I'm curious. But relieved. <laughs> yeah, and in terms of sextants, like now you cannot use sextants until you do those things. But did either of you ever use sextants before you were at like the end end game? I I don't think I ever used a simple sextant before I was like deep into maps and was like setting up. And then I would just use them to like block mods. I, Pretty much, I yeah. would definitely use them on on while setting up the atlas to help with map sustain. So, okay. but 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 still, I, I I hear what you're saying. Um, while talking about concerns uh, regarding the new atlas, like you like you mentioned, the watchstones, I am concerned about 
how expensive it's going to be to respec your atlas right mm. there's a new crazy farming strategy and you want to get in on that is it going to cost yeah. you five to ten x to reset your 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 passive tree because orbs of unmaking were expensive right yeah if you wanted to spec into or out of the cyrus nodes every time you were going to fight a cyrus that became a quite a lot of currency that you had to invest every time so i hope that we get a regret orb tier currency for atlas respec or you're really going to have to be careful when you invest points into the atlas yeah i, I was just gonna say they were saying that the orbs of unmaking are that's it's still the currency that's going to be used it's just gonna become a lot more common oh okay. Um, okay but i don't know how common is common right if it's orb, mm. orb of regret level i think that then we're in good shape right then it should be fine um i think that that is a big concern, though, that you're highlighting. Sorry, Locke, I'll let you make your point. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you're playing SSF and they're as rare as they are now, you're kind of screwed, right? You're, Definitely. you're just locked in for the most part because, like you said, if there's some big brain strategy and now you need to, like, unspec and go to the right side of the tree, there's no way. So let's hope, fingers crossed, that it is... If it's Orb of Regret rarity, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I really yeah. hope it's that. I think... Is, I'm thinking especially from like from our perspective, right? We we played for years, right? Uh, all of us, and we're pretty clear on the mechanics we like and the things we don't like from past leagues. For example, like if if I really liked Blight, I I, I still really like Blight. You know, much hasn't changed in you know three, four, or five leagues. Um, but for newer players, right, where they don't know all the league mechanics, that's where it's especially punishing if it's not rare because. You know, they, they don't know the mechanics and they say, yeah. oh, okay, what's this new tree? And then they start specking because you because you know you're going through the campaign. How many times do you see a... I don't think you can see a Blight Encounter until maps. Uh, or a Legion Encounter, right? I, I don't think those are in the Yeah, campaign. I think those are gated to maps. Right. So it's like you haven't even seen them. So you're kind of specking in. You don't know what it is. And you you get there and then you realize, oh, wait, I actually hate Legion. <laughs> you know? And then you're and then you're kind of locked in, right? And so it's kind of like... that. That's where it's especially punishing. But I'm hopeful, again, that due to the currency rarity that... That's also something that's pretty easily tweakable, right? I, I don't think it's like, you know, if they find if we find that it's too rare, I think if they really wanted to, they could tweak it. But I'm I'm confident that they they, they understand these gripes. Something, gripes, I should say. something that I also really like is that the tree is atlas wide. Okay. Instead of me just getting essences when I have the essence node in Haywork, I am now getting the essences in every single map that I run. Yeah. Even yeah. from even from the start, setting up your atlas. If you if you take a few nodes early, you are going to be flooded with that mechanic. You are going to have so much oh, yeah. of that resource. So it's so good I for yeah for for planning a strategy early. Uh, you need a plus two bow. You need some essence crafted gear. Focus farm essence. You need a lot of harvest. You go for harvest early, and it's going to affect yeah. every single map you do throughout the rest of the league. Um, now I think we've talked a lot about the 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 setup in the early stages of the atlas. But at the later stage, the final version of the Atlas, where you get to favorite one map so much that you'll <laughs> probably never have to do another map again, regardless of region. I, I don't know. I love that. I don't know how you guys feel about that. It looks very cool. Uh, I mean, I like it in concept. I did hear some somebody was, I think it might have been yesterday, I was listening to Faded Connections, actually, that someone was talking about how it's actually not as good compared to the current system for favoriting i, I correct me if i'm wrong on that yeah uh, Lock, I, I know I you, think, obviously you were on it so you, you you know the point better than i would yeah i think i think as Baylor said it's not as high a percentage as it is currently but the difference is you don't have to just run one region right like wait exactly can you, yeah yeah you can drop like a haywalk map in like a in another region right I think the the difference is exactly That's right. Confusing. So it's like if I think a lot of the difference is that you can run any single map on the Atlas and it's the favorite system is still affecting it. Whereas yes. before, I don't think that was the case. I think yeah. that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's especially right. especially at like tier sixteen, right, where it doesn't matter anymore. So yeah, yeah. And I think, another, I think that was it. Another really cool thing about the global atlas is that there were a lot of regions where I felt they deliberately put certain mechanics in maps with layouts that didn't favor it. Like you would have, I don't know, just like an example, like you would have breach in toxic sewer where the mm. breach opens and like 97% of it is just in black wall that you can't kill anything. <laughs> but now, now you can go anywhere you want. So that's another reason why it's great.
Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Actually, that a lot of the mechanics were not necessarily suited for the region, the maps in that region that yeah. uh, you typically want to run. So that's that's a really good point. I, I didn't even think about that. Um, I, I think this is a fantastic system. I, I think it's just simplifying this is just the way to go. And I like the the progression style. I, I'm, I'm super hyped for this. Yeah. I'm really excited for the tree. I can't wait. Um, because the Maven was good, and I think the Maven was certainly uh, an upgrade over mm. the season, the you know the system prior. But um, with I guess system prior was no Atlas passive, so <laughs> this was uh, yeah. So this this is this is definitely an upgrade over that. I think it's a good iteration. I'll say exactly. It's a good iteration. Yeah, you, I I do think um, we're gonna get some crazy combos though, because usually you were restricted oh, yeah. to the combos in a region. Now. Yes. There, I, I already see people stacking different mechanics and it just breaks the entire game or it makes you way too much currency. I'm looking forward to it. The The first oh, league yeah. where we get a new system like this is always so fun because no yep. one knows what works. <laughs> no one understands what the best route is to take. And, you know, maybe maybe we get another sea of blue with that like we had with the Harveys, you know, exactly. some busted thing oh, yeah. that you just did the entire league and it broke your PC if you couldn't clear them in a split second. I loved it. Yeah, and the best part is GGG is the most important person who doesn't know what's busted yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> they'll know after this league, but not now. Now we can abuse it for three months. I'm sure even just at a base level, there are some absolutely nutty nodes in there that they haven't shown yet. That oh, yeah. we're, they're kind of like leaving to be like, when you open it for the first time, someone's going to be like, holy shit, that's insane. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so like, th that's what I'm waiting for. Because I mean, the, if you like look at the tree as as it's kind of like being flashed in the uh, in the promo teaser kind of thing, there are like, there are these weird looking nodes on the outer edges that look very, you know, Keystone-esque. And I'm really curious what a lot of those are. I know they, they've kind of flashed a couple of them here and there, but I think that there are going to be some that are unlocked through special ways. Kind of like how Uncharted Realms, you know, we didn't get the Uncharted yeah. Realms in the any of the initial information, right? It was just kind of like, we just, someone Surprise. just found it. And then, yeah, and everyone's like, oh my God, there's an Uncharted Realms thing. And, and that's where all like these really interesting nodes are. Plus one, you know, Watchstone modifier, things like that. Um, so I think there's got to be something like that hidden in here. Oh, I, yeah. I just feel like there has to be. So I'm really hyped to find that. I'm really, really hyped. It's, we'll uh, it's like, yeah. These, these, God, these, these full year, uh, or I guess end year, beginning of year expansion leagues, just giddy. You know what I mean? Yeah, every time, man. It's always so exciting. They do it. <laughs> they do it. Um, anywho, so within the new Atlas sort of changes, there's also new bosses. Um, GGG basically showed that in the same way that you could have the Maven witness an encounter, there's kind of similar style buttons in the map device for the two new bosses whose names are escaping me, the Eater of Worlds, I think, and the other one, I cannot remember. Blue guy, uh, red guy. Yeah, blue guy, red guy. <laughs> you, 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 see, you see him in the template. Am I, I, I'm on blue side, right? So up and this way, am I right? <laughs> yeah, I think you got it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, so uh, blue guy and red guy, and uh, you can have them sort of influence your map, and these are two new bosses to fight with new uniques. Uh, so I guess we obviously we don't really know all that much about them yet. Mm. We kind of understand the basic fundamentals that there's a similar functionality. I, I, I think I don't remember precisely. So guys, please feel free to jump in. But essentially, you influence the map, and then the closer you are to finding them, there's more mobs of that type. Is that right? Um, I, th I think it's something like that. If, uh, if you put that influence on your map device, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. But what does it mean closer to finding them? I think like in the same way that if you're closer to finding one of the conquerors. Yeah. Uh, like is it going to be like a, a bar progression thing? I would imagine so. I don't okay. know, but I would, I would imagine. I feel like people generally like that system. It's predictable. Mm. Yeah, there are, um, there are I, a few UI elements that we don't fully know what they do just yet. So yeah. that might be progression trackers for chasing down these bosses. Yeah. yeah. I just hope it's not like the elder system of old, where it's just kind of like... Oh, no. I hated that system. I mean, obviously, I, again, I don't want to speculate. We talked. We, I've already set the bar, but not trying to speculate. But I will just say the elder system sucked. It was just terrible. <sighs> trying to like so, bounce influence yeah. off each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was there was times where I had like literally fifty percent of the atlas covered in influence, and he's not spawning, and I can't figure <laughs> out why he's not spawning, and it's just like totally painful. Yeah. So the bar system is great. I hope they stick with it. But anyway, point being that the closer you get, I think that the more sort of uh, 
taken over by that boss, you are. And uh, I mean, new boss is always very hype. I love the theme. I also, I, I haven't heard anyone talk about this, so maybe maybe this will be like a fresh new idea. <laughs> about to drop one on it. you guys. Um, I think they've taken to heart this note of colors, like distinguishing colors. Because remember, everyone was complaining about Delirium Grey League and like, you know, like really yeah. like dull colors where you can't see anything. These are bright red and blue. They're distinct. You can tell exactly what they are. I don't know. A that's, little. I, I think that's minor criticism taken to heart is how I would put it. Yeah. I guess it's one of those things you kind of expect someone to do. And then when they eventually do it, it's just so obvious that people don't notice it and they don't appreciate it, right? I think that's what you mean. <laughs> like they're like yeah, gray, exactly. gray, 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 and then they're like not gray and everyone doesn't notice because yeah, that's how yeah. it's supposed to be. <laughs> So that's good why, point. Exactly. Yeah, that's why PoE is so far ahead of the competition, in my opinion. Right? They've had so many years and so many, oh yeah, so many of these. Oh, gray on gray doesn't work. So now we write that down. We remember that for the future. You know, this doesn't work. We're gonna remember that. This works really well. And they've had so many leagues to build on that. <laughs> now, talking about the new bosses, Cyrus took me so so long to to fully learn and be a, be able to successfully do cyrus okay maybe that was because we still had south africa well, we didn't have south african yep. servers but these new bosses being being maven maven seer i think i'm looking forward to them but i'm also i, I know i'm gonna get frustrated um but the learning experience for new bosses is always yeah. so exciting I, I i don't know i i as someone who doesn't necessarily go out to farm bosses per se i do like you know the first few fights with the new boss if you remember your mm. first cyrus fight um that was so fun you don't I, remember it i blacked it out <laughs> maybe you had a storm at the door maybe that, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what the happened. thing like these fights i it, from the visuals that they showed us like the the gameplay they're very bright and they're beautiful they look so good and oh, you yeah. can see everything i i have a feeling we'll have to see the fight but hopefully everything is well telegraphed so that it's not frustrating in the same way cirrus was frustrating cirrus if you didn't watch a guide made absolutely no sense there's no way oh, you yeah. would have figured that out well unless you were like a big brain gamer but hopefully this is if it's frustrating frustrating for the right reasons not like yes i cannot see anything and the fight doesn't make sense Fuck, i hate cyrus not so much Sorry. I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> and not to harp on Cyrus too too much. It's it was also particularly frustrating because Cyrus was a very difficult boss to catch up on, right? So if you died yes. in the middle of the fight or you logged out or whatever it may be, it, getting back into the fight was really tricky. I mean, especially in the early days. So I'm hopeful they've kind of learned their lesson there in that, right? Because those storms, th those don't need to be in there. There's no reason. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I kind of hope that they've taken taken to heart some of the complaints from Cyrus, because I think Cyrus is a pretty universally disliked boss. Maybe not hated, but disliked amongst the endgame bosses. But looking at the trailer or the, some of the, you know, the videos that they've shown, the boss attacks do look pretty telegraphed. I think they mm, haven't yes. really only seen most much of the, the sort of the sub bosses. I, I don't know if we've actually seen too much from the, the actual main boss fights, because right there's like the sub bosses and then it goes up to the, to the main boss, kind of like the version of Conquerors. The tel the, but the, all the moves that I've seen do look very telegraphed, which is cool. Um, and I think that's that's a that's a PoE2 thing, right? I think they're kind of moving towards what people enjoyed from the PoE2 uh, trailer slash demos that were out there in Exocon. So I, I I'm really excited for those. The boss fights, yeah. the rooms look pretty clean. Uh, the bosses look really good. The monster types, I, I noticed there's a few different new monster types that look really cool. They added like five or six just to Act Two, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. So on a side note, but yeah, I think that the boss fights look awesome. I I mean stuff like this is like. This is what gets me up in the game in the morning, you know what I mean? It's just like, I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, new new bosses, new, I want to say, uh, influence monsters or no, not really influence monsters. So I know I none of none of us are really minion players, but at least there are going to be a few interesting new specters going around, maybe. That's, True. that's a good something point. to talk about as well. Good point. Yeah. yeah, there will be new influence monsters. And then... Yazzie yeah, will find it. Yeah, you'll yeah, find it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the influence, so there is that system, and I don't know if this is core, where you find those little totems or whatever on the ground and you can click click something oh, yeah. that makes it harder and then gives you another reward. Did you guys see that? And is is that part of the core? That's not part of Arch Nemesis, right? That's just yeah, something that's, that's in the game. Yeah. That's core. Yeah. I think that's pretty yeah. cool. 
I, I'm I'm lost on this one. You're lost? You missed about? a lot of people missed it. Did I miss this? Yeah. yeah, so when you're in maps, you're gonna stumble upon little beacons or whatever, and they're gonna have an option, and you don't have to click either of them, but the oh, top option. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. We'll be yes. like okay. all boss damage shocks, but it drops uh an icor or one of the new currencies. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. I completely I think, forgot. Yeah. I also like I only caught it on the second watch. I was like, oh that's pretty cool. That is but, cool. They kind of they kind of glossed over that. I remember yeah. it now being in there, and yeah, that's very cool. So that's even more cool. juice. It's also customization, which I think is cool. Uh, risk reward. I feel like that's been like a very much a trend. Uh, Ultimatum kind of set that bar. I feel like of that progression. You know, you can do this, but the, all the mobs are going to have this now. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is similar kind of vibe, and I'm into that. I'm into. That. I think it'll be. I think it'll be fun. Um, any any level of customization, difficulty, risk reward situation is is positive this i would say exactly I, I i don't like the all or nothing style right where it's kind of like you get everything that's difficult or you just have plain old mapping right so yeah it goes one way on that note though arch nemesis is the league that's coming with the new expansion uh i had written down in my notes it's kind of metamorph plus i don't really know if you guys think of it in another way it feels kind of metamorphy it's kind of like putting the organs in the um whatever it's called, the attains laboratory and putting out the metamorph. It's kind of like that, but it's a little bit more customizable. There's more recipes to it. Cause right, you get a lot of organs in metamorph that were pretty useless, right? And you didn't mm, really want yeah. them because they didn't have currency effectively. <laughs> You're on trade league, they didn't have currency, you didn't want it. And now they've kind of given you the option to convert things based on recipes. There's a lot of recipes out there that I'm sure we have not seen yet. We've only kind of given, been given a taste. So quick thoughts on that from you guys. I'm I'm excited about the recipe system. I really am. I think the um especially the the one that they showcased where you get to convert everything into a currency. I think that's really really cool. I just hope the recipe the recipes aren't too convoluted. Um and I also I'm 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 also wondering how much you can target farm the recipes. Um to, you know, if you really want the currency one, how often will you be able to get the currency one? But that's it's it's something that I think we we were flooded with so much info that the, the arch nemesis mechanic itself we we got a little preview of but i'm still so much in the dark when it comes to to the entire league mechanic ahead of us yeah and it was overshadowed by everything else definitely it was yeah. just like oh cool there's a league on the side i forgot about that <laughs> <laughs> i mean i it'll be fun and cute i'm probably gonna completely ignore it up until maps and then start using it i don't I guess it depends on the rewards, right? And it looked juicy. How difficult it is, too. Yeah, yeah, and how difficult it is. Like, if you're doing it in Act 1, you're probably maybe wasting your time. I don't know. Unless unless it's, like, uniques, right? Then it could be awesome. You find one in Act That's 1, it's say, like, yeah. here's some uniques. I don't know. I, I'm one of those nerds who sometimes just skips the League mechanics on maps, but... I don't know. It is, I try it is... hard in our midst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll do practice runs and then on the league itself, league exactly. launch, I'll do the league mechanic in every single zone. <laughs> and then my good time for a campaign turns into a two-day actain. Exactly. So yeah. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I fully do. Uh, but the, the rewards, it does seem, though, like you're very much in control over what you get as a reward. So going for uniques early, you know, might give you a, an early tabby or something. I definitely don't think... Uh, if you want, if you're concerned about time, it's something you want to do in every single zone because some of those fights do like look like the 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 mobs are going to get beefy and they might take some time to kill and fight. Uh, but I do yeah. still think it's going to be worth engaging with, definitely. Mm. Yeah, you, you read my mind. I feel like there's going to be a five, ten, two hundred clips of people getting tabulas from these day one. Oh yeah. Uh, so I feel like it, that could be good, but obviously it's very it's very luck based. So I don't know. Well, it could be a strategy like Gwenon, Gwenon farming an sure, expedition. Sure. I, I'm pretty sure you're going to have some people who just, like, reset zones in wherever, like, the Hail Rake area, just to get yeah. that. That's true. No, you're right. You're right. It's a good point. But it's it's kind of like, do you really want to spend your League Start doing that? <laughs> no. But some people no. spend their League Start farming <laughs> Onigarashi, so... Uh... That's true. You're right. You know what? To each their own. I'll, t I'll, right. I'll let yeah. it go. <laughs> They're also gonna see, we're also going to see a few rip clips. If you remember Metamorph, where the yeah. hardcore players, you know, built these that Metamorphs without, yeah, without fully understanding and you just got instantly deleted. I do think, though, we do have the advantage of not fighting this dark 
ball of goo than actually fighting a boss or a monster where you can see movement and, and hopefully skills being cast or attacks being used. Uh, Metamorph's visual clarity was also a bit problematic at, at the start, and I think it's better now. I do mm. think that Arch Nemesis, from what we've seen, looks really good. Maybe. You guys look skeptical on that one. Oh, I was just skeptical about Metamorphosis being uh, visually clear. clear. Yeah. Yeah. I still yeah, don't know what's okay, happening. True, true. <laughs> I still get one tapped nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> but it does look clearer for this, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. M Metamorph was also just like, I feel like you didn't really know what you were always getting yourself into, <laughs> is how it felt. Definitely. Uh, whereas this feels a little bit more controllable because you're kind of, it's, it's very conscious effort to move a part into the recipe as you like before you're just kind of like i'm just gonna click all the top tier rewards yeah. it's like a crazy you know what i mean it's just like you're going as quick as possible whereas this feels like it's you probably need it's, it's a little bit there's just that extra second of delay right which maybe will make you think do i really want to do this and and you know you make your decision and and you kind of doom yourself if you make the decision so plus your yeah. plus the metamorph is map specific right where you, if you kind of if you don't if you don't use it you lose it right if you don't make the metamorph with these organs right then you lose it but in this one you kind of you're pulling from your inventory True. so it's it's different so you're you have to like really decide do i really want to spend this one because i could save it um yeah. whereas metamorph it was you had to use it so yeah you're not forced because... to engage with the mechanic every zone you can like just ignore it for a bit farm up yeah. the little orbs that have no name and then yeah that's actually cool. That's a good point. It's not like Metamorph where it's like you use it or you lose it. Yeah. An exactly. Another thing another thing that they did mention was the fact that you need to do four per map, I think was the number, but they spawn more than four. I yes. like this. How many times have you guys done a ritual and then you're three out of four, you think your map is clear, but you don't know where the last ritual is. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yes. So I really like this change and I think it's something that they should, uh, you know, keep doing in future league mechanics that work mm. this way. I really like it. Very nice. And on the like on the similar note, right? How many times did you do a ritual and then forget to buy the rewards? Oh, true, <laughs> true. Often. And in this one, right? I'm glad that you get to keep this. The, again, you get to keep the organs, as I'll refer to them, uh, separately, right? In this one, as opposed to in ritual, again, you don't use it, you lose it situation. Yeah. Um. So, and that's the saddest, right? When you do a really juicy ritual map and then you get to the end and you totally space oh. and forget to get the your garage sale rewards and. And you've missed out on a mirror for sure. You know? Yeah, every yeah time. for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, on a similar, well, again, vibing with sort of the new things that are coming with slash, the expansion slash the league, there's crafting changes. I know, Law Alcohol, I'm sure you're foaming at the mouth here uh, for these ones, but uh, we've got new Implicits, the Icker and the Ember, I believe they are called. We've got new Chaos Orbs, new Exalt Orbs, new Annuls. We've got Scouting Reports, which are kind of a minor tier of currency. Storing Sexit Mods, which we kind of touched on a little bit earlier. And then Influence Mods moving to the normal pool because Influence Mods are now rare. You know, Conquer Influence yeah. Mods. So, Lolcal, you want to kick us off there? Thoughts on that? Because you are the crafter, really, of the group here. Yeah, in terms of like end game crafting, I don't find it that interesting. I don't think it's going to be something people engage with as on like as deep a level as currently influenced items but i do love these new things because it creates a really really nice bridge between just like normal rares and then your end game influence items because previously there was nothing it's like you have your movement speed life resistance boots and then those are fine up until you have like 10x or however mm -hmm. much to make your onslaught elusive tailwind boots then there's nothing in between but now now you can find like a really nice pair of boots and just slap a couple of those things on and turn them from nice boots into possibly amazing boots. We'll have to wait to see the mod pool to see if any of it can compete with double influenced items. I suspect it's going to be hard because there there is no determinism in this, right? You're going to get your little I-Core or whatever yeah. and then just spam it. And the, the mod pool could be very diluted and the good things could have a very low weight. So I suspect, hmm, I suspect what's going to happen is people are just going to, when they find it, just put it on an item and see what happens. And then yep. there's probably, probably going to be so mods that in trade league, you're just going to search for what you want. But Oh, yeah. I mean, oh I'm goodness. thinking about it this kind of like, oh. It's a lot of subs. <laughs> hey, thanks, Todd. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about this in terms of like influence crafting 
uh, junior, I guess. Uh, yeah. Sort of, it, it's kind of like baby influence crafting, right? Because it, it, you think about it like the Maven Orbing is, it's a low risk Maven Orbing because you really aren't bricking the item in the same way mm. that you were with Maven Orbing. The, the, there's very little risk to your reward. The only risk is currency, but the reward, sorry, the, the risk is not to bricking the item. Yeah. Right? yeah. The same that with Maven, Maven items, you know, you, you spend an 11X on a Maven Orb, you use it and you brick the item and you're sad. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah and, right. And Log Lo is having PTSD right now, flashbacks of so you know, hundreds of Maven orbs being used. But it's it's kind of like that didn't feel good, and that was really only accessible to top end crafters, such it was. as you know, like the people here, right? And I I can I'm not a big crafter, but that's just not what I do. I prefer to Same. farm up the currency and just buy things. Um, but for people who are crafting, you know, I'm happy to let them spend their Maven Orbs. But now I'm kind of like, well, this is pretty accessible. It seems yeah. very low risk. The implicit, because we're, again, we're working with implicits here, but they can be very impactful. I think that there's there's a lot more motivation for someone like me who doesn't really dabble in crafting all that much. I, I'll do basic things, but um, there's a lot more motivation for me to really engage with that system, which I think is cool. Yeah. Um, I think I, I'm treating it kind of like rolling... For example, if you were trying to roll Tailwind with alts, I feel like it's that type of crafting, and then, yeah. then like the Maven Orb on top of that, right? Because you're basically you're using these currencies, spamming, trying to get whatever you're looking for. So if I'm looking for, let's say, like added fire damage to spells or something, let's just say that's rare. So I'm using the currency repeatedly, trying to get that, and then I get it to what I want. I use my Conquest Orb, right? Is that what it's called, or something like that? Orb of uh, Conflict. Yeah. Orb of Conflict. Thank you. That's it. Um, and you use that, and let's just say that's like an X, and you spend that, and I'm like, okay, well, I didn't hit what I wanted, but it's not really that much. It didn't cost me all that much. Maybe it cost me two X to roll this. Okay, let's keep going. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's like a little bit, it's like a step in between alt spamming and, you know, high-end Maven crafting with influence mods. Like, this is like a perfect middle ground for yeah. me. Yeah, um, excellent. I think it's cool, because it seems like some of the implicits can be build-defining, potentially. Um, but also, again, you're not totally ruining your item if you don't get it you know you can still use them uh so i think it's great i think it's great wow you're getting you're getting a lot of subs yeah, in here. I, 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 <laughs> thank yeah. you everyone um yeah. people shake whole, whole, whole chat's about to be subbed <laughs> don't stop chat <laughs> so so one thing that i will say about the uh, the new system uh i do think the success of the system is going to be determined by how available the currencies are because i do Agreed. think a lot of the yes. time um it seems like it's it's going to be a, like you mentioned rolling for tailwind it's going to be a spamming crafting a spammy crafting me uh, method where it's mm -hmm. not you get your one mod you may even orb you miss you hit you go again you're going to continuously work on an item as it evolves so if these orbs are expensive and inaccessible i don't know i don't know i think we're all just going to wait for the old for you know the normal influence awakeners orb system so i i hope it's yeah. more available because it is interesting i would like to engage with it early I would like the new system to be the middle, the you know, the, the kind of gap filler between nothing and full influence gear. We'll have to see if that is the case, though. Yeah, that's true. It, it might be spammy, but it might be, like, early on, right? It can't make your item worse, right? You could use one of those things and just get something nuts that's really good for you, and that's going to feel good. I think we will see people on Reddit come, uh, sorry, website complaining about, <laughs> about so you, did you name drop <laughs> <laughs> sorry i said it i said the r word live on stream god damn it these subs man but I don't, don't know what's it's crazy we're now here. two guys and one atlas <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're gone <laughs> but we're gonna have to see like you said Sniz, it depends on how common it is and that also applies to the fancy exalted and annul and chaos i think so my theory is those need to be cheaper than two exalted orbs because if they're not yes. then you just use a harvest reforge key yeah. prefixes yeah. or lock prefixes ref you know chaos orb otherwise it's pointless but there, there could be Agreed. some cute things you could do it with it if it's pretty common <laughs> like i don't know maybe you have a it's it really just is a prefixes cannot be changed right so exactly yeah, that's that's it. Which which if it's common is really powerful. So let's I don't hope think it's, it's going to be. I don't. That's the thing. I don't think it's going yeah. to be common. They said it's going to be like very rare new currency. Yeah. yeah. 
So I think it's going to be rarer than Exalted by themselves. The, like the Exalted yeah. is going to be rarer than the current Exalted. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't really know. There it's, are again, some tough pieces. To, tough to know. There are some pieces where you influence uh, mods. They don't necessarily have something in the influence mod that's like a game changer. Uh, the first thing I kind of think of not being a crafter at all really is, is fizz weapons. You don't really have any influence type that's that giga for fizz weapons. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, maybe a bad example. But having this new... having I know you don't really have much control. You only have an exalt and all and a chaos orb. But being able to switch between prefixes and suffixes while working on your item might be useful. I don't know. It's I think it's one of those things where we have to get our hands on to see how it really goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel wholly unqualified to even weigh in. But <laughs> I'm I'm but. not totally convinced. We'll have to see. I it mm. really it all comes down to the rarity of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm more excited about the implicit rerolls than I am about the conqueror. Yes. Or, you know, than the blue and red orbs. <laughs> yeah, and those so. those would be cool if like harvest wasn't in the game. Oh man, those would be such sick orbs. But harvest in the game, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm surprised they didn't take a look at that this league, honestly, because this felt like the yeah. perfect time to take a look at it with all the again with all these crafting changes. I feel like it was kind of alluded to by Ziggy D uh, in the Q and A, but um, I'm surprised they didn't hit this kind of head on, just because I think this is harvest to me right now is super divisive. Right? There's a lot of people who think it's insanely OP, and they're kind of like you're an idiot if you don't think this. And then there's like. A large percentage of player population who's like, I don't engage with Harvest. A, yep. because I, and I, this is how I feel personally. I think the crafting can be worthwhile if you farm it, but I think Harvest just as a mechanic is just not fun. I don't like engaging mm -hmm. with the mobs. I think they're they're too they're too rippy, and I feel like it's it's annoying to me when I die in a Harvest because of some rare that just popped out of the ground and just one tapped me with like one hit because I was just happened to spawn in the wrong spot. I don't know. I. That's that's like one of the primary reasons I don't engage. And then you get to the end of that, and you hit you get like bad rewards, and you're kind of like, well, why did I just waste my time doing this? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Harvest to me really needs some love. I think either remove it or rework it at this point um, because it's just not. I don't know. Oh, Maybe that's controversial sad. take. Yeah. I no, it's fair. I I wish they would just give us like, Einhar orbs to just store yes, across. That would be fine. That'd be that's, that's a good rework. That would be so good. I mean, Harvest is ridiculously powerful if you have lots of currency. If you have lots exactly. of currency, it's so good, man, compared to all the crafting methods. But yeah, if you don't have tons, tons of currency, the the kind of like lower tier of just reforge X requires a lot of knowledge to to use optimally. Like most people are going to yeah. find a reforge fizz and be like, eh, "Do I have a, a weapon? Maybe I hit something good." But exactly, you know that there are people who have like, is it spicy sushi? Has like a list where he shows exactly what the best thing to use on each item is. So I don't know about that's cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I I, I think the, the the TFT question kind of is something that gets brought up a lot. That doesn't bother me. I don't mind. The use of TFT, I, that's it. I, I do wish there was an orb system, but like the TFT system is kind of neither here nor there for me. The the question for me more is, it just doesn't feel fun to engage with in game for me. Mm. This is kind of the problem. So I don't know. I, I fall into the the unnamed internet website <laughs> camp on this one. I think. Oh no. Um, <laughs> I know. I will. I, I know. It's it's dangerous to say around here, but I don't know. I I, I, just, I just kind of ignore it. And my my life goes the same. So yeah. But I think if I really wanted to engage, I could. I, I don't know. I don't know, Sniz. What are you? What are your I thoughts on the, the harvest debacle? Uh, <laughs> I I I like harvest, but I like the old busted harvest even more. So. <laughs> oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, even have to, we don't have to even talk about that because that's like obvious. Right? Yeah, everyone yeah. Loves the, everyone loves um, that system. Not everyone. Not everyone does. Really? Um, right, Chris. Chris Wilson doesn't um, like that system. I mean, I I think the new orbs at least show that they're that they're willing to. Uh, experiment with new crafting methods, right? Mm -hmm. We might see multiple, we might see problems with harvest right now, but there might be solutions in the future, right? They definitely didn't do anything for craft, or they didn't not address crafting. They did a few interesting things with crafting. Agreed. The one thing that's a question uh, that I'm not sure of: Do you guys know what happens to elevated mods now, uh, since we don't have a Maven's Orb anymore? We, we have an Orb of Domination, which is the mm -hmm. same thing. It's just they drop now from 
Cirrus, Uber Elder, Elder, and Shaper. But they just yep. changed the name. We still have elevated mods. Okay, because the one that the orb that I saw specified that it's only the new influence types. It didn't say the old ones, but yeah. there might be yeah. some info that I'm missing. There's, there's two. There's, there's two. two okay, orbs. okay, okay, good. Yeah. So at least we know. I was curious about that one. Yeah. That would, no, that would have been sad. a huge. Yeah, that would have been a huge loss. <laughs> I was very concerned about that. That's why I brought it up. No, you're, yeah. you can you can rest easy on that one. Yeah. Glad. Yeah. They did change the the drop locations though to Alcohol's point because you used to drop yeah. a Maven and now yeah. doesn't drop from her anymore. And now she takes the awakened orb. Or excuse me, awakened gems. Um, yes. Which and is the new kind orb. of a. And the, yeah, and the new orb. Uh, so. It's a. Uh, yeah, I, I'm fine with the drops. Uh, shuffling locations and all that. I think that's that's again because y y you have to think from the lens of like optional content versus now what used to be kind of mandatory content right Cyrus before was kind of you know you just play the game and you just naturally come upon Cyrus whereas that's not the case anymore um, so I think they kind of need to rebalance the view which is I think why they took the approach of moving some like the awakened gems to Maven slash the Maven boss encounters um, I think that's all that's all good it's all good stuff yeah. Okay, well, if it, it if it moves to Cyrus, then at least I'm happy because without awakened gems and his unique watchstones, he felt like kind of in a bit of a rough spot um, going into next Agreed. expansion, especially since it's so easy to farm now, right? Yes, of course he still does have his uniques, but it feels like he dropped he lost a lot of the power that he had from his drop pool. But you know, if if that's the case, then yes, farming Cyrus is back on the menu, boys. Yeah, awakened orbs are gonna be very expensive next league, yes. I think. Oh yes. my goodness, yep. you, like having a double influence good base alone is going to be worth a ton. I don't I don't know what oh, an yeah. Awakener's Orb would cost, maybe like 5x, five, five maybe more? Hopefully, Hard hopefully though, Awakener's Orbs you only had when people engaged with the Cyrus rotation. And I know a surprising amount of people who just locked Cyrus and who did one Cyrus at the start of the league and never touched him again. Hopefully mm. now that it's a fragmented system, a lot of the people who want to dedicatedly farm Cyrus will be able to farm Cyrus non-stop day in, day out. True. And maybe that actually generates more Awakener's Orbs and whatever he drops, you know, for the market. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Um, I, I wasn't quite... I was still pretty new when they moved Guardians, the Elder and Shaper Guardians, into fragmented form or into map form. So I don't know how that affected the availability of their drops when they were turned into fragments. So yeah. it, we might, we might see of... the... We might see the same effect with with Cyrus drops. I, I, I mean, on the Elder Shaper note, I think a lot of the uniques were just not very desired. Um, I think they kind of, you know, they, a lot of them were fine, but some of them were kind of. They're like, I mean, you look right now, they're like two C uniques mostly, and so I think yeah. the problem was that it's more that the uniques were not that great, so it's hard to judge. The only thing would be the Watcher's Eye, which I, I don't really remember the price before and after. Um, it was five X. Yeah, before. yeah. Five weeks before, before us. Okay, yeah. for an I eighty five or Una, I yeah, unidentified I eighty six. I okay. A lot. Like, <laughs> okay, so that's like roughly the same, give or take. You know, yeah. it's not. I think it was about six, five or six x this past league. So, um, yeah. I the note I would say though is that with them moving a lot of the influence mods to the normal mod pool, I think that'll also affect the awakener orb value, um, right? Whereas maybe you don't need it in the same way uh, that you did before. I, I don't know if. If lock off, you think that that'll have a big impact, but my my impression is probably yes. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna need those awaken absorbs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. What about uh, speaking of boss drops, <laughs> how Whoa. about some of those new uniques? Nice. Another seamless transition pulled off. Incredible. Well done. Well done. So Everybody. good. <laughs> Claps in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Claps from all the new subs. Um, um, I, yeah, I think, I think a lot of the, the items seem very, very powerful. We'll have to, once again, I think availability is, is a big question here because with the new, the, the aspirational content, we've had some very good uniques introduced into the game, but they were so inaccessible that you couldn't really even plan around do, using them. So mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I think we, especially the, um, I don't know if it's boss specific, I, I can't remember, but the, the Ascendancy Jewels, I absolutely oh, love those. But if they are rare, you are going to pay so much to get one of those. They are rare. 99.9% yeah. 99. of the player base is never going to see one. Uh, yeah. That they can use, at least. 
I wonder if they're going to be Watcher's Eye Rarity or Way Rarer. I, I don't think there's ever been a boss. What's like the rarest boss unique that we've had? Like how many times you need to kill X boss to get certain unique? Uh, the savior from That's Cyrus is pretty rare. That's pretty rare. But I have seen That's a couple. That's pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, when I first won, I remember the first league that Cyrus was in. I think savior was 20x or something yeah, like it was, that. It was really yeah. expensive. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. And you can spam these. You can actually just go on the trade site and buy these boss yeah. fights, which is so cool. So that yeah. might make it rare because it, it is a trade item, right? This is not an mm -hmm. item that has been designed with SSF in mind because you're never going to find it. So perhaps they are yeah. going to really tune it and make it rare. But, I mean, if you find it or if you do get one, it's going to be really good, right? For for any builds, are there any ascendancy notables that are just like crap that you wouldn't really want? Or are any of these going to be better than any two jewels? I mean, there is good an question. argument There is an argument to be made um, regarding power. If it's not some fundamental mechanical addition to your build, if it's just pure damage, you do still take the average of to giving up two jewel sockets with two jewels. So uh, I do think that in some cases, some ascendancies are gonna be giga, right? Like Profane Bloom, you are going to pay so much. But I do think a lot of the ascendancies that we'll get from these jewels won't be used if it's if it's not one of the, the crazy popular ascendancies. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we are still yeah. giving up something. This isn't free. You do still give up a little bit of power in your build. For sure. For sure. I, I think that, so when I originally we, we were shown these, I thought that you could, and then I think this was clarified a bit later, but you, I thought you could divine them into like re-rolling the, the class slash node, yes, I but know. you, you don't, you can't. So you're kind of locked in. I, I think the fact that you need two, just obviously like, that's what makes it really inaccessible. If you get, if it was just one, um, if it was one, but made tool jewel sockets, I don't know nulled or something mm. like it's like pick a jewel sock in your tree and you can't put a jewel in there i think that would be a little bit easier but just the fact that you need two is just i mean it it's 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 gonna be hugely inaccessible for most people like, i yeah. think you know like the like the propane bloom you're talking about sniz that's gonna be like a mirror you know yeah for, you know, for, for the, both of those right so it's i don't know i wonder whether the to your point, Lawcall, like the average power level of getting two is going to be outweigh the jewel cost. I don't, or the jewel downside. I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah. You have to think like the best case scenario jewel because you're probably, this is an end game, end game item, right? You're not just yeah. like, you're not picking this up like while mapping. So if you get two yeah. of these, you know, does it outweigh effectively like a best in slot jewel, two best yeah. in slot jewels? That's, That's how you have to think about it. You can't think about it like mid tier jewels. Exactly. Um, yeah. Know. Because, I mean, if you find, let's say you're playing a ranger and you find a ranger one, is it worth to go out and spend like 10? Or I don't know. We can, Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. We need to see how rare they are and how yeah. much they cost. Because maybe like the the bad ones are going to be 10x, but they're still going to be better than a 10x jewel. Yeah. If that makes it's also sense. obviously yeah. it's very build dependent, right? Like yeah. some builds, it may be really good to, to get these in. Maybe the jewels aren't really doing as much for them versus, you know, some builds where it's like, for example, like, I don't know, max life, triple crit multi or something is just two of those yeah. just outweighs the potential of a third or another ascendancy point. But I do think regardless of that, it is super cool in terms of just like creating whole tons of new possibilities, right? Like, I mean, th this effectively opens up infinite new builds, I feel like, right? It opens up infinite new, or I won't say that, I'll let me back that up. It opens up a lot of new combinations and new concepts that we would never have even had the possibility yes. of opening up before uh you know infinite new bills might be a stretch but uh, <laughs> it opens up it opens up a lot of new things that you know that that they're even like hard to conceptualize right because it's such a new concept it's kind of like when they added cluster jewels i kind of feel like it's cluster jewels are obviously way more accessible but um this kind of is a similar vibe in that sense, right? Like it, it gives you access to totally new points and new ways of messing with the tree that you couldn't do before. And this is kind of a similar thought. You might you might rebuild your current ascendancy differently, knowing that you have these jewels at your kind of at your at your fingertips. Um, so I think I think no matter what rarity, whatever, in just in just kind of looking at it objectively, these are these are an awesome addition I think to have.
Yeah. I think the um I think the the chase ascendancies from each class are gonna be the most bold defining ones. And probably probably really the only ones yeah. you wanna go for. Um like you said, jewels are extremely powerful. I know you can compare cost, like Lokohol mentioned. Comparing medium jewels with medium ascendancy points, you know, might still be worth to get the ascendancy point rather. But mm -hmm. something like Elementalist's um, Shaper of Flames is is so good on uh, a cultist, for example, or having flask charges on any of your other ranger ascendancies. So these these fundamentally build altering ascendancy nodes are definitely going to be worth using. We'll still have to wait and see. Rarity is definitely something that um that that's going to gate these. But I think local, you made a good point. If these are boss drops, then they can only be so rare, right? Yeah. I hope. So yeah, for SSF probably not, but for trade maybe maybe there's still some potential that we get to use them. Yeah, I mean the game is never balanced around SSF, right? You yeah, true. That's true. just not how that's just not how most players play. I mean, a lot of streamers play like that, which is kind of interesting. The streamers play very SSF, but the trade the majority of the player base is on trade league, right? Yeah, softcore trade league. Um, so it's balanced around softcore trade for sure. Um, that's just just how it is. Um, you don't want to if you, if it was balanced around SSF, can you, like it, it would on trade league it'd just be these people one C jewels. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so um, it's yeah. I, I'm fine with it not being accessible for SSF just because the people who choose to play SSF kind of know what they're getting into. Um, the average player, you know, the, the the everyday casual player does not play SSF for the most part. So I, I, I think it's a cool addition no matter what. Yeah, definitely. Yep. I think on the similar topic, though, with sort of unique items, there was a couple, obviously with Prophecy leaving, which was announced a long time ago, uh, the faded uniques have been added into the pool where, where applicable. Uh, Void Fletcher is getting nerfed to compensate for some changes there, as well as just, I think, to make rares a little bit, rare quivers a little bit more accessible. Maven uniques got buffed at the last second, which I think is great because now, again, if you're running Maven in the past, it was kind of like you hit the Maven orb or you hit, you wasted your time, which is a shame um, because it, it's it was supposed to be like the top you know a pinnacle boss which i think is a, a, a new phrase a pinnacle boss um and it didn't feel like it when you didn't hit the maven orb you're just kind of like well oh, i'm yeah. really glad i i'm really glad i wasted you know all this time farming these maven writs and then they amounted to to jack so the buff uh is is welcome so i i guess thoughts on those from you guys sniz please help i'm bad at at talking about unique items <laughs> I mean, any buffs are are welcome. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do think that I haven't really used these uniques, maybe because they mm. weren't in an amazing state, and so it's so hard for me to comment yeah. on okay. the buffs because I don't know how powerful they are really currently. I think the only one I ever used was the um, the endurance charges to brutal charges belt on a power mm. charge or charge stacking slayer. That was pretty cool. So I'm excited about that one at least. So yeah, we'll have to play around with them and see. Um, I do think the awakened gems added to Maven is pretty is mm. is is interesting at least. There is now at least For more sure. reason than I get the orb and it's a fifty fifty. You know, like you mentioned. Yeah, I, I think so. I noticed I mean, in the patch notes it was worded very specifically that the the Maven boss encounters like not the Maven itself, but the bosses. You know, when you fight the boss yeah. room. That can drop, it's, I believe the word was some Awakened Gems. So I'm wondering, yeah. I, was it always like that with Conquerors where they could only drop some of the Awakened Gems? I don't remember that. I, I, I know they could drop them, but I, I assumed it was the full pool. It was just waiting. Yeah. But I think in this time, the wording seemed specific to me that the majority of the jewels could not drop from the bosses or from the boss rooms. It was just from Maven itself. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I, I agree with you. It's a welcome change, but yeah. Mm. It'll be like awakened added fire damage or awakened maybe like awakened called controlled destruction. That's kind of the tier I'm guessing that'll drop from invitations and then yeah. awakened cast some crit, awakened hex touch. Well, I mean they probably still think that's a good thing, but yeah, that's the kind of tier I'm guessing. Brutality, GMP chain, those are gonna drop from from Maven, right? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, the, re the really top tier ones. Well, as I'm assuming is what they're referring to, you know, like to your point, alcohol. But I, I, was it like that in the past? I don't really know. I 
Yeah. Talking about I, it now, I mean, I never, I've, I did quite a few Cyruses. I've, qu I've done quite a few Cyrus rotations, and I've never seen. Then, you never see a GFL clip where someone drops multi strike from Drox. Um, yes. You only it's true. see it from Cyrus. So I, I've, assu I've always assumed that there was a system like this in place, but I'm, I was mm. never one hundred percent sure. I, I feel like. I, I could be misremembering here. I definitely, to your point, since I, I was the same. I, I, I used to farm Cyrus constantly. I just, I loved the, the cycle. Um, I, I, I didn't love the boss encounter of Cyrus himself, as we kind of touched on, but I, I liked the, the, the farming cycle. Yeah. Um, it felt it felt very smooth. I feel like I dropped an Awakened Hex Touch when it was good from one of the Conquerors, but I, I'm not, I, I don't quote me on that because I, uh, I, I could be misremembering. But I feel like I did, and it was like yeah. 10 or 11x at the time, I think, and... That feels like a like an upper echelon jewel. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really, at least at the time. So I don't really, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I you know what? I'll, I'll step back from my from my tinfoil <laughs> hat and uh, I'll put it to a, put it to the side for now. But either yeah. way, I, I'm I'm fine with this system as the new yeah. system. I think it's a good it's a good change. At least we have some clarification now that that, that exactly. this is the case. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's better to know than not know in this situation. A agreed. Um, agreed. Yeah. Because it's like, otherwise, you might just farm Conquerors, which is, you know, if, if you knew that, for example, every Awakened, or I, I guess, now, sorry, I'm thinking of the old system, but you, you might just farm the map encounters and not the Maven itself, if you knew that every single jewel could drop from there, but by them saying some, and, and maybe I'm reading too much into the wording on this, but it feels intentional. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that this, you kind of going in, you're going into the, the, the situation knowing that you're probably not going to hit the top tier jewels from these boss encounters. You're, you're going to have to fight the Maven itself, which you want to do anyway for those points, right? You want to get your Atlas points. So it's kind of a, inevitably you're going to have to do it. So you may as well just do it at, yeah. from the start. Right? And all those cool drops. Yeah. 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 No, I think the, the bossing shift is, is a good is a good change. I'm, 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 I'm in for it. I'm in for it. Um. So I guess moving sort of more towards some other changes. I know I, this is a small hat thing I had in my notes. Local, I know I, I mentioned this in, when we were kind of having our pre-call, but in terms of Ravaged Blight maps being buffed, I never did a Ravaged Blight map because I was told that they were just not very rewarding based on, you mm. know, after like a week. So apparently they've been buffed pretty significantly um, yeah. in terms of their quant. So I know you, you, you did quite a few of those. I wasn't sure your thoughts there. I did do quite a lot. I think it's cool. So it's changed. So now the quantity of the map applies to the chests. Is that correct? I think, I I think so. that's, if that's the so. case, Blight Ravage maps are pretty, pretty cool. Let me just find the wording. Improve the reward. Yeah, Blight Ravage maps now have maps, item quantity mods also affect Blight chest encounters at 40% value yeah previously 20% and eh, I don't know if that's as big a difference because maybe I, I mean, overstated it <laughs> it is better yeah I, mm, if it was 100% it'd be super sick because I did run a few oh, of yeah. those that had like 350% quantity which was Ooh. pretty ridiculous but the main the main thing that was you the main reason you'd run those was for strangle grasp and that doesn't drop so you <laughs> might as well just run normal blighted maps because they, they're so much faster like technically they both take five minutes right the time is five minutes but the bosses in blight ravage maps could be so tanky you would just sit there for like you'd stun lock them and then sit there for five minutes just finishing them off so uh i will have to see if that's enough Fair. but again the the thought process at least later on in league with blight ravage maps was trying to get that strangle grasp early on though early on it's actually sick for bases because you can get mm. i-86 tons of i-86 bases so it's still going to be good for that i just don't think that this is enough to incentivize you to run it for the chest rewards over a normal blighted map okay that's that seems fair yeah i i, I defer to you i'm not sure if you did a lot of these but i, I didn't touch them Last no, I, I tried one or two, but having this boss that you simply couldn't kill was <laughs> just a bit rough at some point. Um, yeah. So I, I definitely agree with Lolcohol. They, these, those, those maps are, are hard to do and they take a lot of time. So the rewards really have to be worthwhile. Going just for yeah. that once, once a league drop is kind of rough to farm if you, if you don't get the drop. I agree, definitely. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on a slightly tangential note, I'm not sure if you guys saw this in the patch note, this new item, the oil extractor. Um, oh. It didn't particularly, ex it's not a particularly exciting thing. It just kind of feels <laughs> tangentially related to the blight situation we're talking about. But apparently you can destroy an anointed amulet ring this feels like honestly for ssf players which i thought was kind of a cool yeah. nod where you can destroy an anointed item because i don't know why you'd want to do this on trade league and get one of the three oils you anointed back so i guess if you if you have the three the triple golden oil for example anoint you get a golden oil back that's kind of a cool quality of life thing i don't think you'd want to do that in if you're if you're using a triple golden oil anoint on an item in trade league you probably don't want to destroy that item um, yeah that's but a bit weird. it's kind of it's, it's a bit weird it, I think it's for SSF. Yeah. It's like they don't need the item anymore. They can get an oil back. So, so there you go. They did bounce around SSF slightly. I, I have to, I have to send out an apology video now, <laughs> uh, saying that they don't bounce around SSF. But no, there, there might be some farming strat there where you, you take a look Maybe. at trade and <sighs> you, you, you sort of gamble, you know, right? You go for, you, you, you search for, whatever what? amulet that has an anoint. Maybe you it have has to a gamble. Single... You say? Yeah, you have to gamble. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, maybe it has a single golden oil, you know, you buy the, the Ami for 5C or whatever, you hit it and maybe you mm. get the golden oil. So there's going to be, we're definitely going to see something interesting happening there, but I that also don't think it's, it's massive. You know what would be so sick? If talismans weren't corrupted and you could use that. I was thinking about that too. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> It'd be so perfect. But it's, are there any, is there any league mechanic that drops uh, anointed amulets other than talisman i think you I sometimes think so. get it so maybe it's cool for that like you get a, a shitty amulet with a good anoint that dropped i don't know do we um, actually do we know that they can't be used on corrupted items i assume I it can't yeah you're probably, i mean it destroys right. the item so corrupt maybe. maybe if 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 it if it can be used on corrupted items then that actually is a nice little buff to talismans dropping yeah. if you actually kind of want them <laughs> Um, because there's so many times for, I mean, talismans right now, I, I, I don't understand why they're even in the game at this point. Yeah, uh, they were but, good for a bit. For one league. Yeah, for one league, they were, they were like good starter level amulets. And then, and then they were nerfed for some unexplainable <laughs> reason. Uh, so I, I, I think uh. that, um, I think that this, if they can be used on talismans, I'm like, let's keep talismans in the game. But yeah. if not, it's. It really feels like it has the, it's a very minimal use. And I mean, talismans, it, again, it's just totally outdated if this is not usable on that. Don't so. let Chris hear you say that. <laughs> I know. I, I, I know he's going to like nerf my RNG and my account if I say this too loudly. But Maybe. I think it's a cool little change. Yeah, cool no, little I mean, item. Even 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 on uh, on a new, as you progress your character, maybe you need a, a silver oil and you anoint whatever unique amulet you were using, you put the silver oil on, and you kind of forgot that it's worth the silver oil, so you put it up for sale for the base price of the amulet. There's, It's going to be kind of rough, yeah. but you can definitely go go scrape through the market and try and find a few ways to make currency with it, if that's something that you really want to do. Yeah. That is not something I thought about, so... Yeah. I don't know. This is it, it. Feels like such a weird thing to talk, to talk yeah, about. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I know. We can, we can we can move on. We can move on. I just thought it was kind of. They didn't mention it, so I thought it was kind of interesting. It's just like a cute little thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. What do you mean? This is like a build defining. Yeah, build, <laughs> this is a build defining, defining item. Uh, okay, moving on as alcohol has <laughs> Sorry. a less graceful a less graceful transition. You're two for three. Um, <laughs> We can talk about now, if you guys are interested, the sort of the buffs to hit-based spellcasting and hit-based bow abilities. Um, it seems like pretty... Sh There's a few nerfs in that are kind of like packaged in there with the buffs. Like they, they nerfed Unleash, uh, they nerfed Ignite to compensate for the spell buffs. So I, I think that, that kind of checks out. I think if I'm understanding correctly, there was nerfs to Totem and Mind Support gems. Um, what are your guys' initial thoughts on that? Obviously, we don't have POB yet, so it's hard to yeah. fully grasp the changes, but it seems good, right? It seems like it's like it's it's going in the right direction. Yeah. I want to hear Sniz, because I know you had feelings about this, right? Yeah, but maybe it's better <laughs> to start off with the optimistic, the more positive oh, no. view on the situation, because... Oh, no. I... Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so, you go. So, so I do. If you if you objectively go look at the numbers, a lot of these skills got pretty big buffs, and I do like buffs. Sure. I always do. But I think self cast has a few fundamental flaws that right. in increasing 
the number of, of flat damage on a skill isn't necessarily going to help. So the first the first concern that I have with a self-cast meta is mana cost. After they change the mana cost, even before they made all the changes to mana cost and supported mana gems, uh, or the supported cost of or the mana cost of supported gems, it was kind of hard to sustain mana on on self casters, especially if you were going for high attack speed. And you know, after reading patch notes, it seems like they really do want us to to increase damage uh, by scaling attack or cast speed. I mean, sorry. So I'm concerned about mana cost. I do think running an endearing mana flask, a high level clarity, and having reduced reduced cost crafted on your your jewelry is probably going to be necessary. For a lot of casters, mm. maybe I'm maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I do think that that might be a problem. the The second thing that I'm concerned about is when you reach a certain point with cast speed, where regardless of what skill you're using, if you have enough cast speed, it feels like you're playing a channeling skill, where you gotta stand still to deal DPS. Um, and now a bad example is a Cyrus. Cyrus's attack beams. Not all builds are tanky enough to stand still and take those, right? If you stand still and you take even the basic attack beam, not necessarily even a die beam, that's going to hurt you quite a bit. So you're going to be constantly running around trying to dodge things, and then you get these tiny little windows that force you to stand still and try and deal DPS. Even in the Maven fight, um, you run around, you're dodging a lot of things, so trying to stand still and then still aiming your damage is really, really rough in my opinion. Yeah. Hopefully I'm wrong about that one. Maybe... Maybe this was an example of one or two builds that I played that felt like that. But I think mana cost and the the lack of mobility while doing boss fights is going to be the downfall of the self-cast meta. Unless the skills are just so busted that they three-hit bosses and it doesn't matter. Mm, I don't think they will. I, I agree with you fully. Like, they needed to improve animations and, and like, base mm. cast speed for it to yeah. feel good. I, I tested some art. Like, I, I looked at the numbers and I thought, hey, this looks cool. Then I went into game with, like, pseudo level 25 gems felt so bad man like even if the damage got to a place where it was good just the play style was so clunky and i think the only look maybe very very end game well invested characters will get away with self-cast but the way i felt about it was you kind of need a dot on top of the self-cast so that after you hit it there's something that's still dealing damage while you're running away yeah, agreed. And that's why that's why often I prefer playing brands. If I feel like playing a, a self-cast caster, I tend to just play brands because brands, you do have that advantage. You do still stand still to cast the brand. You do still sort of have to aim, but you have a lot of mobility while the brand is still ticking dealing DPS. So it's it's really difficult because I don't know how you fix that in self-casting. I don't know how you bring self-cast back because I don't know how you fix that. Uh, I think bows... Bows kind of have the same uh, the same problem with barrage, where you need to stand still to attack with your barrage mm -hmm. attacks. But it feels a little bit more comfortable on bow builds. Maybe, maybe it's fine, right? Maybe it's fine. Maybe the new cast speed thresholds make it feel really good. But I'm not convinced. I'm not starting self cast. Yeah, I think the utility is is just like the general problem, right? To you guys' point, it's just it's it's not you can buff the damage however you'd like. It's just kind of the the utility is what needs to be addressed. And they mentioned that in the patch notes, which I thought was strange. And then they didn't address it at all. Yeah. Uh, so they're like, yeah, it just feels kind of bad. You need like defense and mobility. Let's just buff the damage, which I thought was like strange. <laughs> so I was like, true. at least at least plead ignorance, you know what I mean, and and not mention it. But um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm a bit more optimistic. I think I, I like, uh, to your point, I, I did Stormbrand starter last league, and I actually thought the, the build felt good, like from a, like a gameplay smoothness. I, I, I'm, I play self-cast constantly, so maybe I'm just like a sucker, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed the brand play style. Obviously brands benefit a lot from cast speed, right? Um, so in terms of, you know, quality of life, but I think I don't know. I, I, I think that it, the damage fell off. The problem for brands for me last league was that the damage fell off way too hard by the time I hit red maps. I, I felt like I had to invest so much just to be able to play basically like the builds. Like I was looking at you guys like trapping last league and I was thinking my build is so I spent so much more on this and I'm doing like 25% of the damage it feels like and that didn't feel good. So I feel like that'll help for that that transition. You know, I feel like I could have taken Stormbrand occultist to the next level last league if this was a little better but i don't know i i i am optimistic that again 
there will be a way, but I, I, I still think you guys, I, I, mean, I, I agree with you guys completely that they kind of, they kind of, they kind of miss the mark just a bit. Uh, I think that they need to sort of take a second look at mobility. I, I think this is like the first crack at it, right? Like this is, yeah. let's, 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 let's buff the damage. Let's see how people, it plays out people. Maybe we see a little bit of a boost and then, okay, let's, let's kind of take a, cause I think a mobility or a, a defensive change is a little bit more nuanced, right? So I think that they kind of need to take a, I froze there for a second. Never mind. Um, I, I, I need to, uh, so they need to, lost my train of thought. They need to kind of take a second look at it depending on this mm. league, uh, how things go. So I think this is a good first crack necessarily. I think that if they just adjusted the movement and not the damage, I think that people would still be saying, you know, it doesn't feel like it can compete at a damage level. So I feel like the only way to do this is to do both or I think the damage first. I, I'm in favor of damage first and then both, but I, the utility will be, you know, necessary change at some point. It's kind yeah. of yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm skeptical about the, the self-cast play style that we're trying to go for, where you stack cast speed and you try and burst down a boss. But after the buffs, I do think we're going to see the return of a few old favorites. I think Bladefall Blade Blast is looking really good. Mm. I think we're going to see the good old... And maybe the Chieftain Bladeful Blade Blasters make a comeback. Maybe even the um, the Volconus Inquisitor Bladeful Blade Blaster. I think that's a very, very... Uh, a starter with a lot of potential. So I don't think that the buffs were uh, just bad in general. I don't necessarily think mm -hmm. that the standstill and completely destroy the boss with, you know, 15 casts in a second is going to be the future of spellcasting. But I do think we're going to see a meta shift and maybe a few new interesting comebacks because of the buffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder I mean, if I'm just thinking, what what would the game look like if you could cast spells while moving? It would be a different game, right? Is it? Yeah. 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 If they were to if they were to make that a cast while moving or cast after you cast once, that would just become the most popular way to play to play spells. And you know, that's kind of mm -hmm. the same problem as cast on crit and spell stinger currently. Yeah. They're simply better than self cast. But I, I also thought about it for a moment, Lolkohol. I had the exact same idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? I want to make a gem. I can, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would like it. I think that sounds really good. Like, I would play with that. Yeah. <laughs> Cost while yeah. moving support. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering even... I, I don't want to speculate too much on this, but I, I'm wondering even from like a technical, persp technical perspective how big of a leap that is, right? To make it from where you had to stop to cast a spell. And like that's like it, that's like a thing, right? You, you, you cast a spell and it automatically stops you. I don't know whether that has a fundamental change in like, you know, from a technical perspective. I'd imagine it's doable, right? They seem to be able to make leaps pretty consistently every league. But I did think about that too, in terms of, cause that would be, that solves a lot of the defensive mobility yeah. issues right there. It's like, if like I'm imagining you're casting, you're running around casting brands and you're not stopping. Kind of like, you're, it kind of feels like a channeling ability to your point earlier, Snaz, like you're like, well, you're cycloning. Uh, it's like a similar, similar type thing, but I don't know. I think we're gonna have to wait and see on this one a little bit to see how it feels in reality because it's easy to look at a POV and say, yeah. oh my God, this is like 200 billion DPS. But then when you actually get in yep. into the game and you 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 stand still and you just get fucking sliced through <laughs> by some mob, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't feel that good then. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that, I think it's, yeah. You know, we'll have to wait and see. I, I, I'm okay with this as a first pass though. Yeah. Again, I think that yeah, if they just be. did the utility yeah. changes and not the damage, it would feel you can move, you can go as quick as you want, but if you're just not killing anything, then it doesn't matter. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm okay with this as a first pass, and then you know, seeing how things play out, the next league make a reevaluation to say, okay, now is it time to really take a hard look at the utility? I don't know. And so slightly more optimistic, perhaps. Yeah, because yeah, spells are cool, man. Spells are cool. Yeah, I like yeah. them. This is uh, this isn't something that I have any any feeling you know of dislike for i like spells i really wish that there were cool play styles with them i want to blow up legions with a lot of different spells i think that's cool um yeah i will have to wait and see i do think that the the hydro nerf definitely did also address mm. or did nerf a few spells but i think we're going to get into that in a second we can yeah we can we can get into it right now <laughs> um okay well the hydro nerf i think a lot of us saw it coming and then after the nerf yep. happened uh, you know, I think a lot of us are. Those of us who, who liked playing the skills that needed Hydro are sad, but I don't think... Uh, we all knew that it had to happen. Uh, we all knew, but we're still sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is sad. We have Tornado in its place, but it's weird <laughs> and it doesn't... It just, like, yeah, wiggles around. It's weird, definitely. 
<laughs> Tinnitus is a funny <laughs> skill. It's a funny skill. I try to use it, it just doesn't feel the same, man. Yeah. But... I Did, had a, yeah. I had a lot of fun with Eye of Winter and Hydro. I do yeah. think Eye of Winter is going to struggle now. I think Eye of Winter went from being very popular for the two leagues since it's been introduced, and it's probably going to go away. Unless there's F -tier some... now. Yeah, unless there's some tornado tech. I know they buffed the base values, but... I I've played Slinger. If you play... I've tried a Deadeye. If you play a Deadeye Spell Slinger with Hydro or with, uh, with um, uh, Eye of Winter, you get Tornado before you get Hydro. And Tornado, although it works, it doesn't do what you want it to do. So I think Eye of Winter is in a pretty bad spot because of the Hydro nerf. And I don't think Eye of Winter is the only skill. I think a lot of skills are going to be played a lot less because of the changes. So that's sad, but, you know, the meta shift is also is always welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with bow attacks, like, the a lot of bow builds felt like they needed it for single target, right? I'm not the best person when it comes to builds. Like, I'm sure you guys are more knowledgeable. Wasn't it just mandatory? Yeah, I think we should move into bow attacks now. Yeah, as well. But okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's, it's really rough, okay? It is really rough. The loss of Hydro mm -hmm. on a lot of bow attack builds, general in general, projectile attack-based builds are, are going to suffer a lot. Hydro was yeah. really, really big. I, I mean, basically uh, made special shield throw two leagues ago. So. Yeah, it did. It made it I, so good. I, I'll be honest. I don't know if the the buffs. I don't know if this is a bow league. Um, they buffed. They buffed a few things. Buffed in quotation marks. But losing hydro, I so many of the builds that I played are. I don't want to touch them without hydro now. Even even mm -hmm. even if they gave us numerical buffs, I don't know, man. I don't know. I I don't want to play them now. I'm yeah. gonna wait for a better alternative or maybe changes to hydro again. Exactly, like, bows never struggled with clear, and mm -hmm. the D DPS nerfs are kind of irrelevant to clear with bow builds, but we needed hydro for single target. I, that's what mm -hmm. I always felt bow builds struggled with, was single target, and hydro was, like, the solution in a lot of cases. But I, uh, I guess it is... I guess they don't want to have a crutch in the game where it is 100% necessary to use a skill for its function in a certain way, but then, I, like you said, I don't know if this is enough to cover for it. I don't think it is, right? I think yeah, I definitely head. don't think so. Yeah, Sorry, I, I, I think that's Go pretty, ahead. Uh, I was just saying, I think, look, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. It's yeah. pretty much, they don't like the idea that you need a second universal skill to make every other skill work in, 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 in a specific way, but I don't think they gave enough to compensate for the loss. So it feels like, another situation kind of like the hit based spell casting buffs where it's like they did they kind of they addressed it on one side but they didn't address it on the other side and this one might be too insurmountable to make it work um I, i'm sure again with enough investment you can make anything work oh yeah but um it's kind of like for the you know average player getting into end game you know let's say you have like a 10 20x build after a few weeks right that's not it's probably not going to be enough to really push encounters. And I, and I think with this being such a heavy boss league, it probably is going to suffer in particular. Like last league, I think you might have gotten away with it, right? Without Hydro um, because of Scourge mechanics. I yeah. mean, yeah, obviously not great because the clear, because the clear again was, is, is less hit by this. So I don't know. It's it, again, another one we're going to see how it plays out, but uh, I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in your guys' camp here. I'm I'm I I don't know how I feel about the bow buffs in general. Uh, buffs again in quotation marks. I feel like we lost power um, from the gems, you know, the supports you'd use, and then we gain power back on the items themselves. But it's such a weird shift now because instead of having power on your one alt gem, you now have power on the 200x bow because you need to mm. go for higher tier mods. You need to make a really good bow now. And I know, you know, crafting weapons is, is pretty difficult in PoE. So well, I- All seeing dollar signs. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know if I'm convinced. I do think the one thing that might save the, the bow, at least the hit-based bow league, I should specify. Um, I think the new Mark tech might save it, at mm. least. Maybe it, it, it might make it interesting enough where uh, Sniper's Mark has always been very, very, very powerful. And now mm. we have better access, more uptime on Sniper's Mark. So that might be good, but losing Hydro and the changes to, to bow skills or bows and their supports, I don't know. I'm not convinced. 
I, I, I wouldn't start with a bow. Yeah. I wouldn't. Unless it was bleed bow. Didn't Inko and Taki, they say they're going to start with bows? Yeah, bow? yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I sp I'm specifically referring to hit based. I think yeah, yeah, bleed, right, bow hit is, bleed bow is looking juicy. I think um, poison on bows is also looking pretty juicy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Even even TR, I don't, I still don't think TR would be bad. So dot based should still be good. Hit based might be a bit yikes. So yeah. I don't know. I think that's true just for damage in general in this game, right? Dot is king, especially mm -hmm. early on. Yeah, especially yep. early. I agree. Scales. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Scales nicely. The I think we can talk about the mark rework now. I I like yeah. this. Yeah. I really really like the fact that we have mark on hit and it doesn't need to be linked to the attack that you're using. Um, yes. I I think this frees up a lot. And I think the big thing that not a lot of people are mentioning, but I assume most people know, when you have a mark on hit ring, you get the mark the the effect of the mark gem without any quality. Now that means that. Assassin's Mark meant that you weren't generating power charges. You know, Poacher's Mark didn't mm -hmm. give you frenzies. But you now have yep. the benefits of these qualities from this new gem, even if it's reduced effect. So this is, if anything, another way that you can generate charges. Uh, you can generate rage. You, you got a lot of interesting things on alternative quality versions of marks that are going to be really, really good. So I'm looking forward to that, especially with how pow powerful marks are and how early you can get them. Um, I think it's, it's going to be pretty big. I do think people are gonna people are gonna opt to use an additional curse in their build, regardless of how they get it. People are gonna go for an additional curse because now, instead of having to run two janky rings just to run a curse and a mark, you now get to run one janky curse on hit ring, and you get to have a nice other ring because you don't need it for mark on hit at all. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? I d don't think I could have said it better. You nailed yeah. it. You, yeah, I was gonna say I, that. Not, not too much to add. I don't. I didn't even think about the quality, man. I didn't. Yeah. So that's generating more charges. Yeah, and sniper's mark is big. I think sniper's mark. The quality of sniper's oh, yeah. mark is enemies take five percent increased damage. And since this is now a setup where you have supports, you should technically be able to use an enhance. So because of these changes, mm. I I am predicting that we're going to see an increased price for enhances in general. I think a lot of people can sacrifice an extra link for the crazy benefits from having all that extra quality on your mark. Okay, so you have a three idea. link, sniper's mark, mark on hit, and enhance. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is the kind of thing that I don't think of, man. Like, you're so clever when it comes to builds. I just see this, I'm like, that looks cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you, like, I'm with you, Lockall, on the same yeah. way. <laughs> I mean, it, just from just from the few that I've thought about or that I've researched, it, it, we're going to get frenzy generation, we're going to get power charge generation, uh, you have you have ways of getting rage now. Enemies take increased DPS, which is more multiplier to your damage. So depending on, I, I still don't think we have the number for the reduce effect of the mark from the the bolt in gem itself. Uh, in patch notes, it didn't seem like we're gonna get reduced effect, but they did say we're getting reduced effect. So maybe we're still waiting on those numbers. But it's very cool, and marks are permanent now, right? So even if yeah. you don't even mm -hmm. use the um the mark on hit thing, using it in an Arcanist brand is so nice now. You, you feel like you're, you're you're such a brand lover. I'm I'm waiting for the brand league starter. No, no, no. I am uh, <laughs> as a brand lover. I am very very sad about the state of brands. So, but oh, we we, no. we definitely don't have to dive into into brands at all. What on the, the I know on the topic of on the topic of marks, <laughs> the the dead eye ascendancy where if you kill a marked enemy, the mark now moves to someone else. I mm -hmm. I am I cannot wait to see how that works in That's practice. Cool. I cannot wait, because if you think about putting Sniper's Mark on an enemy, right? You hit the enemy with a barrage, they die. The Mark on Hit gem specifies that the marks only work on rare or unique enemies. But the Dead Eye Ascendancy says it moves to a nearby enemy, right? So we don't know if that can go to normal monsters. But if you can transfer Sniper's Mark to a normal mob in the pack, and it gets hit by the sniper's mark split projectile and it then splits its own projectiles if it dies and it moves the mark to a nearby ally or enemy and that enemy splits as well i think we might have a situation where you instantly crash your game your game and blue screen your pc so <laughs> i we still need to see how that one functions in practice uh, but i'm excited i'm excited to play around with that at least that's interesting because when i saw that i was like does it really matter you're going to kill the monsters without the mark anyway but i thought too but 
but we're not thinking about the benefits. I was just thinking about damage, right? But there's also like, if you use Assassin's Mark, you're getting life on kill and chance to gain power charge. So you have that. It's pretty much really, really good recovery. And also just instantly you get your power charges and your computer crashes. Yeah. That's really sniper's cool. really sniper's more for blue one. screens. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's the quickest way to earn a top Reddit post. I yeah. blue screened with this approach. <laughs> How quickly can I fill up my 64 yeah. gigs of RAM? <laughs> blue screen speed run. Yeah. <laughs> Any percent. Yeah. Any percent blue screen. Um, okay. Yeah. It's an interesting. Yeah. See, I, I'm glad you're here because <laughs> Me too. I was like alcohol. I was thinking, I was like, oh, cool. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, I'm, I'm, I'm such like, I'm such a noob, right? I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, you know, going yeah. through patch notes. <laughs> it's, when it's, it comes it's such nice power early. Definitely don't miss out on this for yeah. anyone in general. Like getting the marks early, Act 4, Act 5, when you can get the support, it's such nice DPS boost. Okay. You're really going to like having it. I think as well, the accessibility of this is really nice, you know, because before it was limited to these relatively high tier rings, essentially. Yeah, were, yeah. You know, you you didn't, you know, because again, a similar situation, the average player, you know, you, you, you could find one of these rings. It's not that crazy. I found, you know, many of these rings, but really getting getting them getting to that point to find the rings is is kind of is a little bit of a leap uh so i think just getting marks sort of into the base level of gameplay kind of in the same way that i feel like immortal call uh is in there steel skin is in the game right where it's like it's like a average level of defense that every single player can get and this yeah. kind of feels like a similar vibe right where the marks are now this average level of power that a player can access and Obviously, there's ways to scale it, like to your points. Is like, let's say, enhance is a really expensive jewel this league, which it certainly might be. Mm. Then that's like sort of that extra level that players, you know, who are at the higher tier of gameplay can hit. But the average player can still get a mark on their in their uh, in their build, and it feels good, right? And I mean, so I if that's, anything, that's a good thing. Then both of your rings aren't trash because usually a curse on hit mark on hit right. ring is either trash or a few exalts, right? Extremely yeah. expensive. So that's yeah. that's another level of power. You now have a good secondary ring that's that you don't true. have to give up. Yeah, because you yeah. would settle for a shit ring yeah. just because mm -hmm. it has that one mod. Yeah. Literally life on the mark. That's all you wanted. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And then okay. a good implicit, maybe like a resistance implicit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, those those like high end rings just to get the mark were, you know, stupid expensive, right? Like it was like if you had a really good yeah. ring with the mark on oh, it. Oh, yeah, no. At 100 exalts, right? Like super oh, yeah, expensive. Yeah. Um, RIP the crafting of those, though, that I made a lot of money doing that. So. <laughs> Uh, people probably still use it like if you're really yeah. st starved for gem slots which could be well, uh, it's I, I think, it's removed I, though i don't yeah. think they're on there yeah they're not on oh, there. oh they removed it oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah. yep rip rip that currency strat yeah you could put you can still put them in an arcanist brand and they last forever now self-casting marks isn't even that bad now because they last forever true 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 yeah all right awesome uh Honestly, we covered most of the, the topics that we had. Is there anything that I'm missing here? Big things that you guys wanted to go over? We zoomed through this. Should we talk about some league starter ideas? I'm sure people sure. in chat are curious. Yeah, okay. Then, oh, that's, uh, that's a good idea. It's actually good. Then maybe afterwards, if anyone has any questions that we didn't address yeah. in chat. Quick Q&A. Okay, Quick top Q &A. three starters. Top three starters. I'll I'll start off, okay? Go. The, these. Go for it. Any starters, top three, okay. Burning arrow or explosive arrow, sorry. Explosive arrow, ballista, okay. elementalist. Of course, you know, it has to. You're a meta um, slave, Sniz. Yes. No, <laughs> I, I mean, true, true. But, you know, if it works, it works, okay? Explosive arrow, ballista, number one. Number two, poison, lightning strike, assassin. Now, that's something that I, that's I know not a lot of you expected. Oh God, yes. what a, that was a twist. Yeah. Inc uh, Incomodius has made a video about it. It's a build that he's been testing, and it looks stupid. Nightblade abusing with just a single heist base dagger looks really, really good. Uh, and it's definitely something I'm thinking Ooh. about. And then the third one is probably what I think I might be starting with, and that is just Southcast Exang Scion. Um, Exang didn't really get a buff, but it also didn't get nerfed. Fizzdot is still really good. And now this league, you're not going to have to compete with the Seismic Trap boys for Cold Iron Points. Maybe if you, maybe Lolkohol, you, you know, you'll still have to compete with Lolkohol. <laughs> but Cold market. Iron Points should be way more accessible. So those are my top three. Hmm. Interesting. I, I suspect traps are still going to, I think Seismic Trap might still be pretty high up there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people are going to shift over to 
ice trap or explosive trap because those are getting numerical nerfs that are kind yeah. of intriguing. I think I think seismic. If it turns out that that AOE change, whatever the hell it meant, is good, is not bad rather, it's going to be popular. So I mean, I'm going to start with that. So that's going to be on the top of my list. But then I have to agree, like EA totems, EA ballistas are going to be great. But just be warned if you're going to play that, everyone's going to be playing it, and everything related to it's going to be very expensive. Yep. And then. Those are the only two builds I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was say three builds, man. You're really reaching yeah, here. Geez, you know? <laughs> Cost on uh, Yeah, uh, mine are all brands, actually. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I think, I, yeah, I mean, I've been reading a lot about explosive arrow ballistas. That's, that seems really strong. Personally, I don't love the totem slash ballista play style. It, it kind of feels like trap-esque to me in the same way. Drop and wait, drop and wait. I, I, don't, I don't like that. Um, that's why I like these hit-based spell, you know, <laughs> I like these hit-based spells because you just do them and, and there's an immediate reaction. So I mentioned this kind of prior to like the actual official start of the podcast. I, I'm 95% sure I'm going to start Poison Concoction, um, uh, Poison Concoction Pathfinder. So I think that should be a fun one. I, I've never, I never played the Concoction builds before, so I'm looking forward to that. And it's so rare that I decide on a league starter this, this early, so... I, I'm, I'm thankful that I actually have time to plan instead of literally just hopping in 25 seconds before the league starts and I'm like frantically looking up what to do. Um, so there's that side of it. Man, I, I think Ark is making a comeback supposedly. Again, not to the same, again, it, it falls into the, the situation we were talking about prior with like the ut utility is not quite there, but I think it could be a fun one. I think Ark is just such like a satisfying skill to use. And it feels Definitely. like it could be a little bit more doable this league. La last league, right? I know that I think was it last league was the death of Anki's arc, arc wizard. Did it um, die? Which was, it I think died. he stopped updating it the guide. Yeah. Oh. It. I, I think he moved it to uh, an inquisitor. Maybe it, okay. it was something. He moved it. He moved it to um, some templar, I think, and then it died. <laughs> I think it was like that was like the death throes, you know. But don't quote me on on that. I can't remember exactly which one. But. I think that that could that build could make a comeback. So, I'm uh, I, I'm excited for these these builds. But like I said, I, I'm with you guys that the utility might not outweigh it. But I think for a league starter, it's fine, right? Like yeah, a lot of these self casting builds will be fine for a league starter because they really just need to get you to like red maps. And I think that this should get you there if you play smart. Um, whether again, like you can kill Uber Elder with Arc, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of seems unlikely. It's Arc just feels really bad single target. Yeah, um, I've never tried. So, it. yeah, I, I haven't either. So, I am hopeful, but you know, for League Start, it's a different ball game, right? So, uh, I think there's a lot. There's a lot of good options, though. I, I really think that you know, it, yeah, it feels this league like there's people are throwing out a lot of interesting builds more so than maybe like two leagues ago. Uh, where it felt like everybody and their dad was playing um, Spectral Shield Throw, and that was the meta, and if you didn't play that, you were kind of missing out. Yeah, um, that's so true. This, this, fe this feels pretty diverse. It's good. It, like, from the outset. Reading the patch notes, it's like, I don't know what to start with, and I have somehow defaulted yeah. back to Seismic, but almost because <laughs> there's so many things, I don't really know what to pick, and I know Seismic, so once i've played that and other people have had the chance to go play the other stuff then i'll be like mm -hmm. okay that looks fun i'm gonna go do that it is such a bad feeling when you pick a league starter and it doesn't pan out that yes. is especially if you especially i know local you you've been there with new skills and they just <laughs> aren't at the level that you expect them to be and then you're just like oh my god i've just wasted you know how much time building this character yeah. <laughs> uh so it is, I, I'm with you, like picking something relatively safe at the start is not always the worst thing, right? It's, it's not a necessary, I mean, there's a lot of like really cool potential, but I'm with you, I'm kind of like, let's 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 save that for character two. <laughs> yeah, save it for character <laughs> when I have, two. When I have a little options, a little more options. Hmm. So I, um, I, know you, I know you talked about it briefly, the alcohol, but do you guys have any, uh, any advice? I feel like we're gonna go into a league where a very, very large percentage of players are gonna start with a specific build. Um, do you have any advice for people starting the meta skill in a new league? Having started Seismic yourself, Lolkohol, past leagues, I know you mentioned it quickly. Do you have any advice for people who, who really think that, you know, it's, it's the play, it's the only play to start the meta starter? Mm -hmm. 
I would mm. say if you are going to play like the most meta thing, it's probably because it's really strong and you should be comfortable just treating it like SSF to start with. Unless you wanted me to tell people to play something else. No, no, that's... No. <laughs> just, just trust your build then. Trust your build, trust the gear that you're going to get on the ground. Don't feel like you need cold iron points. Let's pretend it's lost. So I don't know what EA Ballista needs, but yeah. You, you'll be fine with just cheap res. Wait a week and then get the fancy stuff. Yeah, I think that's key is that you don't want to save up to buy an item that's going to be a 5C unique in a few days. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So say if you if you're kind of money strapped, don't don't waste your money on stuff that seems really expensive on day three, but it's but like by week one it's gonna be much, much cheaper. But like by the end of week one. It could um, go the other way though. It's true. It could. Certain items do definitely go that way. Like like obviously like there's like super high end uniques like headhunter go up in price yes. like crazy. So it's like if you could buy a headhunter day one, you probably don't need to be listening to this advice, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's still like that's like one of the ones where it goes. But but for example, like I know um What's the crown of the inward eye? Is that the one from Cyrus? Yeah. You know, right? Like that, that that's like a five X unique on day two, and then it becomes literally a once a unique by like week and a half in. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't it's like don't you don't need those. that immediately. Yeah. The one thing I'd also say is that if you're playing a super meta build, um stay kind of tapped into the conversation. Cause they peop, you know, people yes. can only do so much before we actually get in there and play it. Uh, you know, there, there are plenty of times where you get in there and, you know, people are making adjustments to their build, especially if you're following a build guide, you know, kind of don't, don't like pick it up and then never look at like the conversation, you know, off the forums, you know, stay tuned in to what, especially if you're following a build guide to what the build guide folks are putting out, because a lot of the time they're making updates as things change and, you know, POV only gets you so far. So don't, 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 don't put it up in POV and forget basically is my point. Uh, because you yeah. might end up missing out, miss out on some things and you're kind of like, oh, it's actually, I don't like this build, but then it turns out the build guide creator actually made like an item swap that makes the build feel a lot better or so something like that, right? So. I think one thing that I, I just quickly want to add as well, since we're running out of time here, um, I, I want to say that it's not necessary to start the most busted starter, okay? When you watch Ooh. racers and you watch those hardcore players say, this is the best thing to start. I can't start anything else other than this. It's because they're trying to be fast. You know, they want the best tools um, that they can have to perform as good as they can. You don't need that. Trust me, yep. you don't need that. There are many comfortable starters that will allow you to do what you have to do. Of course, if you want to push and you want to go yep. really, really hard, definitely. But don't feel forced to play a starter just because it's what everyone's doing. Definitely, definitely don't worry about it. 100% agreed. agreed. You should play whatever you like. Whatever's going to yeah. keep you playing, it's the same thing with farming strategies. Whatever's going to keep you playing the longest is the best build, right? So it doesn't make a difference what the meta is if, if you're not enjoying the meta skills. I agree. Exactly. Should we do our Q&A? We've got a yeah. few. Yes. Okay. Should we start you... with Darth? Okay. Sure. Would you rather have a disease that makes you say every thought that ever crosses your <laughs> mind or a disease that makes you react very inappropriately to all the interactions that happen to you and around you. I feel like I already have the second one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I already have the first one, so. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right, let's get a real one. Should GGG from Pirate's Life, should GGG allow us to vend a recipe low tier Eldritch currency as they will become obsolete extremely quickly? I thought I was thinking about that when they revealed that on the live stream. I feel like that might already be a thing. We have to kind of wait and see. Uh, yeah. they, they typically don't reveal vendor recipes. You kind of have to discover them. So I was I had the exact same thought. I think that yeah. it certainly certainly could be in the game. We just don't That'd know be yet. Cool. I didn't think yeah. about it. So that would be really like sextons, good, right? Like, like yeah. vendoring, like sending sextons. So let's hope. And then, yeah. Sniz, a second question specifically from you. Since they nerfed Unleash, is handcasting still viable in comparison to trigger skills? I feel like we covered this, but... I mean, we... It's kind of rough, right? We we don't really know just yet. The numbers look good, but self-cast has a few of its own flaws. Um, it it kind of depends on what, sp what spell you... Or what skill you're specifically referring to. But, yeah, I think it should still be good. Honestly, I don't think we got big nerfs necessarily. I think if anything, most skills stayed the same or got better. So you should be okay. Yeah, I don't see any other questions. 
Hopefully. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree, Leo. Having having something comfortable Incredible to Q play. Guys, well done. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, Leo does have good good info. Comfortable build yeah. rather than a fast build. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're gonna be playing a lot, right? Day one, you're gonna be playing a lot. The first weekend, you're gonna spend a lot of time playing if you have the time. So don't play something that's gonna make you like have sore wrists or gonna make you hate yourself. You know, you gotta mm -hmm. press a million buttons every time just to get. 200,000 more DPS than the guy pressing one button. Okay, it's mm -hmm. it's it's definitely not a race unless you're in the race, in which case it is a race and then do whatever you have to do. Yeah. Hmm. yeah again, the the optimal strategy is always the one where you enjoy yourself the most. It does not matter yeah. anything else. Exactly. So. What about the the secret new button for the uncharted realm for the Atlas? This is a bit tin foil, but there is a theory that there's a secret hidden second atlas passive tree. Does that sound? Yeah, I think there are good. there are many it's UI elements. Flat, it's there. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what they do yet. We're gonna I'm have to wait a stand. And, see. <laughs> <laughs> and thoughts on absolution for league start? I think it's gonna be a very good league starter. From what Nazi has shown me. What about you guys? Have you played absolution? I put Absolution mm -hmm. in a brand at the end of the league um, and played it as a self-casting brand spell, crit-based spell, so I What's haven't played number? Absolution the correct way, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. I've never seen someone so committed to brands. It's really it's really astounding, <laughs> yet tasted, he refuses to play them. <laughs> I tasted 30 <laughs> different skills in Arcanist brand over the period oh of a my week. Gosh. It was amazing and disappointing at the same time. Oh, <laughs> I love brands. I'm with you, by the way. I'm not. I, I'm giving you shit, but I'm, I'm with you. I think they're fun. So... That's why I'm encouraging you. <laughs> brand Bros Galage. Brand, uh, brand Bros. Oh, that's that's the podcast name. There you go. Brand I mean, Bros. You gotta start, to start playing though. Yeah. You start yeah. <laughs> I've only ever used them to level. That's it. Any any yeah, melee starters? Oh, sorry. Next question that I have here. Any melee starters that are still viable? Melee, melee. Um, does Spectral Helix count? If Helix Man. counts, I'd Helix. Say so. Yeah. Lightning Strike, maybe? Raider Lightning Strike was pretty good true. last league. I bet that's oh, yeah, good. true. The, you know, the Poison Lightning Striker that I listed in my top uh, yep. three. That's me. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Um, Steel Skills, also good, maybe. They don't have the, the melee tag, local. I'm sure you could do See, this, this is why don't. I don't talk about builds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brand Bros is down to two now. <laughs> Brand Bros and a dude who like, kind of knows what he's talking about sometimes. <laughs> Brand Bros and Crafting God. And Crafter. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't really roll off the tongue, but oh wait, yeah, Helix also start. doesn't have Helix also doesn't have a melee tag. I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, oh no. Okay. Oh okay, it's okay. done. Okay, well I'm branching one out, brand bro. my own my oh. own my own podcast. <laughs> oh no. I think you could probably start Cyclone too. I think like that's always pretty consistently okay. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like gonna be super. It's the nice thing is Cyclone also is not ever hyper meta, right? Except for when it's like cast on crit, which I don't know how that'll play out this league, but. Um, Cyclone is probably okay. You probably, I probably wouldn't yeah. start it. I'm not gonna start it, but I'm sure you could do okay. You know, Chieftain, but Chieftain, is tough man. Chieftain Cyclone with with staves, still a thing you can do. It's just hard when there looking at when looking at other starters that can destroy the end game on exactly. a five link, right? It's not, it's not like broken. Cyclone. Yeah, but I mean, it's not a broken starter, but it's good enough. Yeah. It'll definitely, it'll definitely do what you what you need it to do, unless you want to go extremely hard. Like I said earlier, yeah. you don't have to. If you're not a pusher, you don't have to. Agreed. I, I've done Cyclone maybe 18 times. It feels like I love Cyclone. Um, you cast on crit and non. Um, I've done Cyclone, I think, like 50% of my league, my league characters have been <laughs> Cyclone, I think. I just love it. But uh, it, it's, not, it's not Legion Cyclone, that's for sure. Yeah. At that level. I think there's a lot of good options. I think there's a lot of options this league. To start and feel uh feel like you made a good choice definitely i agree all right should we take okay. one or two more just one sure. more we have Any one more on... okay one more last one Durb last one burn sorry any thoughts on leap slam endurance charge or melee stun battle marches <laughs> no okay we're gonna go to the next one any thoughts <laughs> on buffed fire trap um fire trap have you looked at it at all, alcohol as the the trap starter here? E I haven't. I I would keep an eye out for a build guide. I don't want to give any opinions on something I haven't tested personally. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Keep yeah. I also don't know. If you find a if you find a, a starter guide and it looks solid, yeah, 
But I do know if that doesn't work out for you, Explosive Trap should be good. Should yeah. be solid. And local host starting a Seismic, so, you know, Seismic still definitely does look like it has potential. For every build, there's an expert, and I guarantee you there's an expert out there for, for that one. So. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Exactly. But okay. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun, This was guys. great. Yeah, I had a blast. Thank you. Yeah, this was, I think we, we actually covered a surprising amount in the two hours. I was like, is two hours going to be enough? But we nailed it. I'm, we did. I think, good job, guys. Should we, uh, well we need a, we need a host who can close it out. Should we do the whole, like, where can we find you on social media thing? Or... Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. You want to start mm -hmm. it off? All right, Sniz, <laughs> where do we find you on social media? I mean, you can you can find me right here on on my my stream, um, and then on on YouTube as well for build guides and weird PoE related videos. And it's Sniz with five Zs. Yes, as you can see right here, if you don't type five, you're no, you'll find me. It's fine. <laughs> Just type as many as it takes to get there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just keep typing one more until you get yeah. there. Uh, yeah, you can find me on YouTube at Amasid on YouTube. Um, occasionally, when when the mood is right and the planets align, I will stream. I usually will stream at least one day during League Start at some point. So in the next five or six days, League Start, you'll see me live. But after that, I, I'll disappear into my cave. So yeah, this was great. Thanks for doing yeah. this with me, guys. I had a great time. Yeah, it was great. I'm local hole. You can find me on local hole. Just search it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Take yeah, care, thank guys. you everyone for hanging. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had a blast.